Carowin Co. presents a weekly scripture. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me for another brief moment in God's Word. Last week we talked about how we should be like-minded, and therefore how the various denominations were wrong. And how can there be so many denominations if we all follow the same Bible? Which is actually an excellent segue to today's verse, which can be found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 18. Jesus is speaking. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. For those of you who don't know, a jot is the largest word in the Hebrew language, which, whatever that word may be, and a tittle is the smallest letter in the Hebrew language, which I'm assuming would be the I. I'm not sure. Um, I don't speak Hebrew. With a, with Hebrew, Hebrew characters, the smallest character could translate to the, to the humble period. <laughs> but if I say the largest word or the smallest letter of the Hebrew language, I believe it's giving us a range. Basically, it's saying that nothing should change in the law. God's law, God's word, God's Bible. And yet we have so many translations out there. The New International Version, the NIV, being so popular. And there's the New King James and the, I don't know how many other versions are out there. But this has just said that those are wrong. Now, I know what you're thinking, but they're just modern translations, right? Something to help modern people to uh, understand the Bible a little easier, right? It doesn't have all those these and thous in it, right? There is one particular verse that this holds special importance for. And if you have a physical copy of the Bible with you, whichever Bible you have, please turn with me to John 3.16. Jesus is also speaking here, but the main, but the important part is one particular jot. So if you will read along with me, please. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That important jot I mentioned, the word begotten. As far as I'm aware, the authorized King James is the only, the only version of the Bible, well, to say only begotten Son. I know the NIV says only Son. But if you've never been introduced to the Bible before, then you think that this is correct, and therefore it's a contradictory statement. We are all God's children. So how can Jesus be his only son? He isn't. Jesus is his only begotten son. And the significance of that is very important. Jesus, Jesus is the only son of God's flesh and blood. To put it in human terms, I'm not quite sure. The term begotten in the Bible means basically they gave birth to. But of course, males can't give birth to males, so I'm not sure of the exact Hebrew definition. All I know is the easiest way to describe it would be to say that Jesus is God's flesh and blood. The rest of us were created by God. He created the universe and everything in it, which means he created the dust of the earth, and from that dust, he, he made man, and therefore he created man. He took a rib from man's chest, and from that he made woman. He created woman. God created man and woman, but he begot Jesus. The reason I bring this up is because that is the most obvious glaring difference between at least the authorized King James and the New International Version. Um, getting back to the Apostles' Creed, 
there's a line near the beginning that says, I believe in, the, I believe in his only Son, our Lord. As we just discussed, this is incorrect because, well, only begotten, you know. And so instead, rather than saying, I believe in his only Son, our Lord, I say, I believe in his holy Son, our Lord. Now, when you're in a group, there's so little difference between the way the words only and holy sound that you just kind of blend in. So, if you're concerned about, about saying something that's not technically on the page, but understood, then unless someone has a very, very good ear, you'll never be found out. <laughs> but, um, when I first started reading it, reading the Apostles' Creed, I um, just recited it along with everyone else. There were a couple of things I felt a little iffy about it, but the way I figured it, everyone else was reading it, so why not me? But, yes, technically the Apostles' Creed is written incorrectly. But it is a man-made Not quite sure how to classify it, but it's man-made regardless. You will not find the Apostles' Creed in the Bible. I am sorry if I sound like I'm going on a rant, but wrong is wrong. Simple as that. But the Bible is right. As it says in Matthew 5, verse 18, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one till shall in no wise pass from the law. And in, J in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he was only begotten Son. If your Bible does not have that word in it, then it is teaching you lies. That, that's just the easiest one to find. Who knows how many other lies are in your version of the, of the Bible if it is not authorized King James. I don't mean to spread hate. I do not mean to spread fear. I mean to spread understanding. The Bible is the cornerstone of all Christian, Christian lives. Do we want that cornerstone to have cracks in it? Or do we want it to be solid for a solid foundation? Well, I guess that's all I've got for you today. So, until next week, thank you for your time. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid you, he will carry you.